Have you ever wondered what it feels like to stare death in the face, day in and day out? Well, let me pull you into my world for a moment, a world where the odds are starkly stacked against us. I'm part of a group, a band of souls, daring enough to dance with danger at every turn. Here's the gut-wrenching truth. Eight out of every ten of us won't make it back home. Welcome to my world, the adrenaline-fueled, heart-pounding life of the 100th Bombardment Group, affectionately known as the Bloody 100th, during World War II. Let me take you on a journey through the eyes of someone who lived, breathed, and nearly died in the skies over Europe. This is not just any story. This is my story, our story, of courage, loss, and unwavering camaraderie. Stationed in England, under the vast umbrella of the United States 8th Air Force, I found myself at the heart of an aerial crusade that would etch itself into the annals of history. We, the daring crew of the B-17 Flying Fortresses, ventured deep into the heart of Nazi Germany. Our missions were clear yet fraught with danger, to dismantle submarine bases, obliterate factories, and shatter the enemy's will to fight. Each sortie was a dance with death, each bomb dropped a blow for freedom. This was our contribution to the war, our fight from the skies. My reality was perilous, the odds grim, yet there was an irresistible allure to this deadly dance that seemed to draw the daredevils among us like moths to a flame. Each mission was a gamble, each day a testament to our resolve. We flew, not just on the wings of our B-17s, but on the thin edge of fate, where the line between life and death was as delicate as morning mist. This was our world, where danger was a constant companion, and yet we soared. The mere mention of our group could bring grown men to tears. Our epic struggle, so full of challenges, caught the eye of Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. They chose to bring our incredible survival story to life in Masters of the Air, a series that captures our fight against the odds. It's our tale, made for the world to see. The moment I found out I was assigned to the Bloody Hundredth, my heart sank. It was a name that echoed with a sense of daunting peril and grim mortality. The Bloody Hundredth was notorious, its reputation preceding it like a chilling gust before a storm. We were the daredevils of the sky, the ones who flew headfirst into the jaws of danger, fully aware that the odds were stacked against us. The Hundredth Bombardment Group, stationed in England, was part of the United States 8th Air Force during World War II. We were the pilots of B-17 Flying Fortresses, tasked with penetrating deep into Nazi Germany. Our targets? submarine bases, armament factories, and other vital assets of the enemy, all heavily fortified and fiercely defended. The sheer mention of the Bloody Hundredth could bring even the most hardened men to tears. Yet there was a certain twisted honor associated with it, a lethal allure that appealed to the daredevils among us. It was a call for those who thrived on adrenaline, who danced on the edge of danger, fully aware that each rush could potentially be their last. Our missions were perilous, each one more hazardous than the last. Flying the B-17s wasn't just about piloting an aircraft, it was about braving the most dangerous bombing missions of the war. Every time we took off, we knew we were venturing into the heart of darkness, into a storm of bullets and flak, with survival being a game of chance. The reality of our situation was stark and unforgiving. For every ten airmen that flew with us, eight would not return. It wasn't superstition. It was a brutal truth. The Bloody Hundredth was a baptism of fire, a place where heroes were forged and legends were born. The odds were never in our favor, yet we flew, mission after mission, into the heart of darkness. We were the Bloody Hundredth, the men who dared to challenge the skies, and this is our story. October 1943, known as the Black Week, saw us lose more friends than we could count. The week was a brutal one, even by the standards of the Bloody Hundredth. Every day we'd climb into our B-17s, the engines rumbling beneath us, the cold English air biting at our faces. We knew the risks, but we also knew our duty. It was a bitter pill to swallow, yet swallow it we did. Each mission was a roll of the dice, a deadly game of chance against the relentless German defenses. We would fly deep into enemy territory, dropping our payloads on targets of strategic importance. Then we would turn around and fly back, praying that luck was on our side. During the Black Week, that luck seemed to abandon us. On a single return from Bremen, we lost 20 bombers. 
20 crews of 10 men each, their lives snuffed out in the blink of an eye. The skies were filled with smoke and fire, our comrades falling around us like leaves in an autumn storm. Then there was the raid over Munster, seen by many as a vengeful strike for the losses we had suffered. Of the 13 planes that went on that mission, only one returned. The rest were shot down, their crews either killed or captured. The loss was staggering, a blow to our morale that we struggled to recover from. Every day we'd gather in the mess hall, looking around at the empty seats, the faces we'd never see again. Each loss was a gut punch, a reminder of our grim odds, but we kept going, we had to. It was our duty, our responsibility. We were the bloody hundredth, the men who flew into the face of danger, knowing the odds, yet refusing to back down. The Black Week was a dark time for us, a period of loss and heartbreak that we would never forget. But it also served as a reminder of why we were fighting, of the sacrifices we were willing to make for a cause greater than ourselves. We were airmen, members of the Bloody Hundredth, and we would carry on, no matter the cost. Each loss was a gut punch, a reminder of our grim odds. Yet, it was more than just our unit. The entire 8th Air Force faced staggering losses. The scale and ferocity of the air war over Europe was beyond what anyone could have anticipated. The 8th was a juggernaut, a force to be reckoned with. Yet it was also a magnet for enemy fire, a target too large, too prominent to ignore. Our missions were far from routine. They were a gauntlet of anti-aircraft fire, enemy fighters, and the relentless cold at high altitudes. Every day, we woke up with the knowledge that it might be our last. Each mission was a roll of the dice, a gamble with fate. The 8th Air Force was the heart of the Allied bombing campaign, a testament to the power of air superiority. We were the hammer that struck at the heart of the Nazi war machine, disrupting their supply lines, crippling their infrastructure, and sowing the seeds of doubt and fear. Yet the cost was high. The 8th suffered more than any other unit in terms of casualties. Over 26,000 men lost their lives in the skies over Europe. That's more than the entire US Marine Corps lost in the Pacific. Each one of those statistics was a person, a friend, a brother in arms. The 8th wasn't just a unit, it was a family. We laughed together, cried together and faced death together. The bonds forged in the crucible of combat are unlike any other. They're the ties that bind, the ties that give us the strength to carry on, even when all hope seems lost. So when we talk about the 8th Air Force, we're not just talking about the planes, the missions or the strategies. We're talking about the men who flew those planes, who undertook those missions, who lived and died by those strategies. We're talking about the extraordinary courage of ordinary men, men who answered the call of duty, who stepped up when their country needed them most. It puts into perspective the scale and ferocity of the air war over Europe. The 8th Air Force wasn't just a part of the war, it was the war, a war fought not on the ground, but in the skies, a war that tested the limits of human endurance and the depths of human courage. The creation of Masters of the Air was a monumental task. It wasn't just about crafting a compelling narrative or ensuring historical accuracy. It was about capturing the raw emotions, the fear, the courage, the camaraderie that defined the bloody hundredth. Spielberg and Hanks, no strangers to crafting masterful depictions of World War II, knew the gravity of their undertaking. They were not just creating a series, they were breathing life into the stories of real men who danced with death in the skies over Nazi Germany. To tell our story, they plunged into the depths of history, pouring over archives filled with letters, photographs, mission reports, and personal memoirs. They consulted historians, military experts, and surviving members of the 8th Air Force, seeking to understand the complexities of the air war and the intricacies of life in a B-17 bomber. The families of those who served with us became invaluable resources. They shared personal anecdotes, handed down across generations, and provided precious artifacts, letters, and keepsakes that offered glimpses into the lives of these airmen outside the battlefield. But Spielberg and Hanks didn't stop at research. They went a step further, recreating the world of the Bloody Hundredth with meticulous detail. They built life-size replicas of B-17 flying fortresses, the iconic four-engine heavy bombers that we flew into the heart of enemy territory. 
Every dial in the cockpit, every rivet on the fuselage, every patch on the bomber jackets was faithfully recreated to transport viewers back to the 1940s. But they didn't stop there. They used cutting-edge visual effects to recreate the harrowing flights and intense dogfights that were part and parcel of our daily lives. The result is a series that not just tells our story, but makes you feel it. You're there with us, in the cramped confines of the B-17, feeling the cold seep through the thin metal walls, hearing the roar of the engines, the chatter over the radio, the deafening explosions of flak. They built replicas of B-17s and utilized cutting-edge visual effects to recreate the harrowing flights and intense dogfights we endured. Our group wasn't just about the missions, it was about survival, camaraderie, and facing unimaginable odds every day. Among the original 361 pilots, 77% became casualties of the war. Each mission flown was a gamble against fate, a testament to the courage and sacrifice of those willing to risk it all for freedom. These men, my brothers, were more than just soldiers. They were husbands, fathers, sons, and friends. They were the daredevils and the dreamers, the warriors and the peacemakers. They were the embodiment of bravery, their spirit indomitable, even in the face of the gravest danger. And so we pay tribute to these men, to their sacrifices and to their unwavering commitment to a cause greater than themselves. This isn't just my story, it's the story of every airman who served in the bloody hundredth. It's a tribute to their bravery, their sacrifices, and the indomitable spirit of those who fly into the face of danger.